This video will be an insanely detailed deep dive into Pharrell's latest collection for Louis Vuitton Fall Winter 2024. This collection has received quite a bit of criticism and even some controversy. In this video, I'm going to be discussing the inspiration behind the collection and dive deep into the ready to wear, the footwear and accessories, and of course, the bags. I spent hours across days reading articles and getting lost down Instagram rabbit holes of post-show photos photos from clients, employees, and fan accounts. I have compiled as much information and imagery as I possibly could to give you this deep dive, including prices and my personal opinions on these pieces. Let's dive in. Okay, a little bit of housekeeping. I literally have eight pages of notes of all the things that I want to cover in this video. So my laptop is over to the left. If you see me referencing my notes, that is what I am looking over to. I also created a bunch of collages of photos of all of the different pieces of this collection that I want to talk about, including many detail photos from Instagram. So please bear with me as I will be showing a bunch of stuff on the screen to reiterate what I'm talking about. I wanna start with a little bit of overall background on Pharrell's perspective as the creative director of Louis Vuitton. So I went back to his first collection and pulled up some of the initial articles that were published from interviews with him that I think provide some really great perspective before we dive into the collection. So first up, this New York Times article from June 18th. This was right before the debut of his collection. Pharrell said, I am a creative director from the perspective of the consumer. I didn't go to Central St. Martin's, but I definitely went in the stores and purchased and I know what I like. He goes on to say that he told the CEO, Mr. Bakari, something similar. He said, I don't feel like a creative director here. I feel like a client. Mr. Bakari added that he trusted Mr. Williams natural instincts despite his never having managed a business of this scale. I didn't even have to speak to him about the commercial importance of what he does and the importance in terms of turnover and volume of sales, but just the importance in terms of impact. So that right there tells us a lot that we need to know. Louis Vuitton is not a old couture house that is known for their ready to wear. It is a travel and bag company. Introducing ready to wear at Louis Vuitton did not come until the late 90s and men's was even further after that. So for them, ready to wear is just additional profit. The commercial importance of what comes out of these collections is key. So please keep that in mind as we discuss the collection. Okay, let's start with the inspiration. I'm going to reference Louis Vuitton's official statement or press release throughout this video, but the opening statement is about how this collection illuminates the roots of the American Western wardrobe. It mentions that it explores the origins and evolution of work wear, and that it heavily utilizes cowboy iconography. Pharrell is seen specifically calling this out in interviews, how important it was for him to show the true first cowboys which were black and Native American. Because I feel like when you see cowboys, you know, portrayed, you, you see only a few versions. You never really get to see like what some of the original cowboys really look like. They look like us, they look like me. They look black, they look, you know, Native American. Another thing I want to mention about just the overall collection is that Pharrell has stated several times in interviews that he designs for humans. This is a men's collection. There are some women models in the show and we know that women often buy from the men's collection. So he has specifically stated that he's not just specifically designing for men, but you can tell in the terminology and the language that he uses when he talks about this, that it might be an internal sensitive subject. It almost seems like he's tiptoeing around it. Like he really Really wants to make sure that he's not stepping on their toes. Uh, for me, um, I know on paper it's menswear, but I just make clothes for humans. Hmm. I learned that, you know, being over at Chanel, I used to wear things that I felt like I could pull off. Not because they were they were less effeminate, but um, if I thought I could wear it, then I would wear it. You know, I think I they just always want me to be respectful and not step on the toes of like you know, the women's department, be, you know, be respectful of our siblings there. Sure. But I just, I pride myself on just like 
making things for humans. Okay, I also wanna talk about release information. I know a lot of you guys watch my unboxings and after the fact, I'll tell you sort of my process of how I got those items. But if you're trying to get ahead of the process, the release period for this collection, it typically will drop in two drops. So there will be the first drop in July and then probably a second drop in August. Pre-orders for the collection usually open exactly one month before. So if you are interested in this collection and you are not a VVIC that was at the show or placed your order right after the show, then you can expect to place your orders or start inquiring with your client advisor in June. Typically, I will send my client advisor as I see the show, like things that are exciting to me, but then I will follow up with her in the weeks and days closer to that pre-order date so that she knows that I'm looking to pre-order. It does seem like pre-orders have a specific amount of inventory allocated, so items can sell out for pre-orders, but then be available later in store. So if you don't necessarily get it in pre-order, that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't get it at launch, but you're definitely going to have to try really hard. Okay, so this is the order that I'm going to talk about the collection and there will be chapters down below if you wanna skip around. First, I'm going to talk about the ready to wear. Then I am quickly going to talk about the shoes, then some of the little accessories. There were a lot of accessories in this collection. And last but certainly not least, bags because I'm going to spend the most time on bags. All right. Up first, ready to wear. So the main themes were the first cowboy as well as the American dandy. We also saw some Native American inspiration throughout. When we're talking about the first cowboys, Pharrell specifically mentioned black cowboys and Native American cowboys. I think we really see in this collection his interpretation of the black cowboy. So a lot of specific cowboy references. When we're talking about the American dandy and just dandy in general, which has been a theme throughout all of his collections, this is referring to the Western tradition of dressing up. I actually looked up the definition of dandy so that I could tell you exactly what it says in the dictionary and Wikipedia. So according to the dictionary, dandy is a man unduly devoted to style, neatness, and fashion in dress and appearance. When I look it up on Wikipedia, a dandy is a man who places particular importance upon physical appearance and personal grooming. We saw a ton of embellishments. We see turquoise used throughout the collection, especially in a lot of the ready to wear details. Turquoise in particular has significant symbolic meaning to many tribal nations. It was actually noted that this is real turquoise sourced from Arizona. I love how we see it in some of like the buttons, the rivets on the bags, not just in the color of the items themselves. All right, let's look at some of my favorite looks and talk through some of the details. So I am not a huge ready to wear client. I am much more of a bags and accessories client. I love looking at the ready to wear and I'm looking at this from a perspective of you know what are my favorite overall pieces what do I think is commercial and sellable and then what are those editorial pieces that we're going to see on celebrities or Pharrell's friends that are also his clients so these four looks here were really some of my favorites the first look out was this beautiful ivory jacket of course with the stunning turquoise bag I literally gasped I think you can see that the main components from these looks which is probably just something that I'm very attracted to is the outerwear, these amazing coats. They are the anchors of these looks. This ivory one just looks so expensive, luxurious. I love the color. It obviously has Native American influence to it. The second look, it was look 49. This is actually a Native American musician that walked the runway. Again, I love this leather and shearling jacket. The third look, I mean, the detail of the motif on this jacket, how can you not think that this looks absolutely incredible? So I read in one of the notes that original cowboy paintings were adapted into a jacquard tapestry. I think, again, this is something that we're seeing in this beautiful coat here. I love how the top starts with this plaid buffalo check and then goes into this cowboy painting. I love the way the colors work together. I just think this is a standout piece. And then last but certainly not least, I love a fur coat. So this entire look, even with the pop of turquoise, really stood out to me. The standout 
looks to me were really driven by outerwear and coats. This next slide includes, again, some of my favorites. I think these are so chic and wearable. This leather motorcycle look is giving me Saint Laurent vibes, but regardless of this being a Western collection, I can just really see people wearing this. I am obsessed with this second look, the ivory jacket with the turquoise buttons. It kind of has like Chanel tweed vibes paired with this baggy denim. I This is, again, one of my favorite looks. He's wearing the pearl necklace. This just looks effortless. Next, you have this buffalo check look, again, with the turquoise buttons, which I absolutely love. So plaid morphs with Damier to create this buffalo check that was used throughout the collection in ready to wear and then in the bags and accessories as well. I personally love buffalo check in apparel. I think it's very wearable, kind of like a classic print for men. I love to buy buffalo check for my husband. So again, I just think this is like a commercially wearable print. I think the theme in all of these looks on this slide here that I love is the turquoise buttons. Honestly, it's one of the coolest details I've ever seen. This slide just represents the craftsmanship that we saw in this collection. Whether you loved it or you hated it, it was hard to see on the runway, but you cannot deny the level of craftsmanship that we saw here. There was a ton of beadwork, embroidery, carved leather. We saw leather jackets and trousers that mimicked the embossing of saddles. Lots of little Western references that you might not have even noticed as you were viewing the show, but when you zoom in, you look at the detail shots, you look at the photos people have posted from the Reese. There is just so much detail in these pieces that I don't think necessarily comes across. And I think it deserves to be appreciated. This next slide is really some of the in-your-face editorial looks that really stood out to me. These are looks that I can really see some of the fashion icons and celebrities wearing versus everyday customers. They're also probably some of the most criticized looks, but I think they serve their purpose, which is that they are editorial and for styling to draw attention to the brand. This first suit on the left, I think would be perfect for someone like Tyler, the creator. I could really see him wearing this. This next look has received a lot of criticism. So I don't know if you've ever seen one of those like rodeo competitions. I don't know what they're called, but they wear these sort of like full looks. And that is exactly what this is. I can totally see some flashy celebrity wearing this. <laughs> Same with the next coat. Aesop Rocky was a ready photograph wearing this black jacket with all of the prints. I could see Aesop wearing both the rodeo look and this jacket that he's already been photographed in. This next studded Damier suit is really giving gender neutral vibes. We just saw Beyonce wear this at the Grammys. It looks like they even made her a custom skirt to pair with it. Another standout outfit that just gets people interested in looking at the collection. And last but not least, this coat and denim look, it looks kind of simple, but I could totally see this being worn by some of the celebrity friends of the brand. It's not as flashy as the coat in the middle, but it still has all of this intricate embroidery. So I think it's really interesting, even though it might not be for everyone. So let's dive into what I'm calling the commercial pieces. This is what I think people will actually be buying, what I think is wearable in everyday life from this collection. So specifically this orange vest, this is obviously a workwear inspired piece. It's a flashy color, but it's a simple silhouette with a Louis Vuitton branded patch. I can see clients buying this single piece and wearing it in a ton of different ways over simple sweaters, crew necks, t-shirts, kind of like you see it here, or even over jackets. I think we're definitely going to see this piece a lot on Instagram. The second look, the pajamas, they do the pajamas time and time again. We always see like DJ Khaled wearing them. It's got the Western print on them, that arabesque print that is embroidered on the jacket we saw on the previous photos, but here it is printed so it's more affordable. Pajamas are still in style. It even has like the Western piping on it. I think that these will be really popular. I do not like the scarf that they are wearing with it, but I think as separates, this print will do well. This is a very commercial set. This third jacket with the LV and sort of this Western font, this is my favorite piece in the entire collection. This is the jacket that I would buy and incorporate into my everyday life. I think this is super wearable. It's obviously Western inspired, but I don't think it's too far Western. I would wear this with black jeans, regular denim, etc. over a plain black or white t-shirt. I think this coat is totally gender neutral. I could see men or women wearing it. I actually prefer it on women. I think we'll see a lot of women clients wearing this jacket. And last but certainly not least, this Carhartt inspired workwear jacket that we saw on Instagram before the collection debuted. This is an easy piece for anybody to add to their collection and literally 
literally wear every day. So it makes it affordable cost per wear. I think we'll be seeing this all over Instagram. So every single jacket in this next slide here, all commercial pieces. I think one of the most common ready to wear pieces that we saw from his first collection were the Damier denim sets. We have it again here. This next look, very workwear inspired. I love the way they styled this. This is like an everyday guy look. I could see someone wearing this look head to toe. And then the last three jackets are a little more Western inspired workwear, but you have the turquoise details. If you can't afford something with the turquoise details in those more dressy dandy looks, this is your workwear look that has the turquoise details. I think any of these jackets, again, very wearable pieces. You could buy one jacket from this collection and get a ton of use out of it. You know the coats were my favorite on that first slide. Those four coats were my favorite. These are the commercial coats from this collection. I love all four of these. They all have oversized shapes, so that's clearly a theme here. The buffalo check one, I already told you I like buffalo check in ready to wear. I really like this olive green one. It's probably my favorite out of the four here, but then you cannot deny the turquoise details in the first black one and the last brown one. I think this black one, again, is perfect for someone who doesn't want to be too fashionable, but you have this great oversized silhouette and then you have that pop of the turquoise buttons. I love these coats. I don't like to use the word hate. My grandma always said hate is a strong word. I strongly dislike all of these looks. I think they were unnecessary. I think that Pharrell does have an issue with editing. However, Virgil Abloh also had an issue with editing. They were often very big collections. I also have trouble editing, so I completely understand, but all of these looks were unnecessary in my opinion. This first look, I'm sorry, Pusha T, because I love you, but this look just ain't it. I don't see anybody actually buying this jacket. The fit and the cuts also just look off in my opinion. I do not like the cow mouflage. I don't like cow print anything. These track suits, they are very Dapper Dan inspired. My theory on why these are included is because it was mentioned that this is about the evolution of American workwear. And this might be, as it's inspired by Dapper Dan, who dressed a lot of like the street hustlers in Harlem back in the 80s. This is giving like street workwear. My interpretation of why these were included, because I think they stand out as you're like, why are these even, even in here? I think that this is street workwear in my opinion, but I just don't like the color combinations. The white is too stark next to the prints. I probably wouldn't have minded these if they had been constructed in different colors. And then this sequin look also, it's very gender neutral, which we saw a lot of gender neutral looks in this collection. I just think the sequin is unnecessary. We don't need sequin buffalo check. This completely stands out as does not belong in this collection. Same with these least favorite looks. This vertical stripe jacket, don't like it. Jail, jail cell vibes. This white jacket with the buttons over to the side, hate this jacket. Seriously hate this jacket. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that. Very, very, very strongly dislike this jacket. I don't know who would buy this. I don't like the cut at all, the shape of this at all. And then the frilly tops, again, I, I just don't, I don't see the point of this. I, I feel like I could buy this from any brand. There's nothing like special about it. I don't like these frilly tops. That To me, they look like, you know, they just belong on the rack at Nordstrom, whatever. Nothing special about them. But are you kidding me? Yep. You just got me these at the grocery store? Yep. You're the sweetest boy in the whole wide world. I'll see you after. I'll see you after. Oh, honey. Uh, you. I was at, it's actually for Valentine's Day. This is for Valentine's Day? You, you put are, it everywhere you want. You are so sweet. I love you, honey. Okay, shoes. Let's talk about shoes. This will be kind of quick. I'm only gonna talk about two of the major themes in shoes. One of them is the Timberland collaboration. Pharrell teased the Timberland collaboration before the show even premiered. Lots of the hype Instagram accounts were posting about it. I think this is a really good idea. Problem I have with it is probably going to be the price. I myself, I feel out of place wearing Timberlands, even though I live in the Midwest and they are useful. I will personally not be investing in these. I'm more of a sneaker girl, but I do think that this was a really good idea. So the notes mentioned that the American work boots are reinterpreted through Louis Vuitton's Italian factories. There were 10 total designs, including a highly limited appair with eyelets and tongue pendants made in real gold. So you saw 10 styles, there were low, there were high, and then some were the monogram print is like almost like shadow printed onto the new book that you can't see it until you're really up 
up close. I just think the way they, they did this, again, was very commercial. It is what you would expect from a Louis Vuitton Timberland, and it makes sense in this collection because this collection was about the evolution of workwear, and Timberland are workwear boots. So again, anybody talking shade about this, I don't really understand. I think this is a good idea. Let's talk about the limited edition gold pair. These are going to be made in a limited run of 50 pairs. They are numbered. They used 18 karat gold on the LV initials on the tongue. The eyelets are 18 karat gold, the lace caps, and the hardware on the tag. It comes with a dedicated shoe box, which is a hard-sided piece. I assume it's the one we saw walk on the runway, and it has a plexi monogram opening door. These boots feature the original Timberland rubber sole. They are made to order with a seven-month lead time, and the retail price is a whopping 75 thousand euro. Again, limited to only 50 pairs. The second piece of footwear that we need to talk about is the cowboy boots. You can't do an American Western inspired collection without cowboy boots. These were developed in collaboration with expert boot maker Stallion Boots in El Paso, Texas. This is Louis Vuitton's first footwear venture from its leather goods atelier in Texas. So usually the shoes and boots are all made in Italy. This one is made in USA. I assume to be close to that boot maker that is in El Paso. These boots are made of calfskin leather with colorful handmade embroideries. They are limited edition. There were three unique styles and they represent the Louis Vuitton and Texas spirit. They are not cheap. They are retailing for around 7,000 euro. Again, there are three unique styles. I have pictures of them all up on the screen. All right, moving on to accessories. Pharrell loves accessories, all kinds of accessories. We know his first collaboration with Louis Vuitton was in sunglasses in 2004. He also did jewelry in 2008, but accessories are also very much a part of his personal brand. He loves to wear them and there are just, it seems like a plethora of accessories that have been coming out as part of his collection. Let's talk about sunglasses first. In this collection versus his first collection, Spring Summer 24, I think there were a lot more wearable sunglass styles. In the first collection, they were really over the top and I think not very wearable for the average person. They were more for the fashion in this collection, I think they are very wearable. So as you guys know, the Millionaires were first created in 2004 by Nigo and Pharrell, and then they were re-released again in 2007. In 2018, Virgil Abloh released his own version of the Millionaires called the 1.1 Millionaires. And then for this fall winter 2024 collection, we got three new additions. So these are supposedly going to be called the 3.0 Millionaire sunglasses. We even saw a very special pair made with diamonds and white gold. These Millionaire 3.0s have more of an aviator vibe. There were a bunch of different lens colors to choose from. There was a light brown, there was an orangish yellow, which I believe Pharrell was wearing these. There was also a light blue. I personally have been really interested in an amber lens lately. I bought a pair on Amazon to test out and I think that I like them. So I'm kind of interested in these amber lens Millionaire 3.0s. This other style is much more close to the original Millionaires and they included some turquoise details on them, which I think was really cool. And then last, I'll put up this collage of all of the other different sunglass styles we saw. There were just a lot of different variations. Pharrell is very known for his sunglasses. I was actually disappointed in the sunglasses he showed us in his first collection. So I think he did a much better job producing a lot more variations of sunglasses. Again, more wearable in this collection. Next, we have to talk about jewelry. Again, Pharrell is very much known for his jewelry. We saw earrings, necklaces, bracelets, brooches, you name it. Turquoise was a huge component of the jewelry, which I love. He reinterpreted a lot of the things we saw from his first collection, like the lover's keychain, but in a Western motif. He does a lot of chains that you can wear on either the belt loops of your pants or you can use as bag charms. We saw them featured in both ways in the collection. Again, reinterpreted with turquoise turquoise beads. The pearl chain with the gold, with the turquoise. This is very similar to the chain that I bought for my bag, except reinterpreted with more of a Western motif. I really love this lover's cuff in the bottom corner. It's silver, super cool. I think the biggest downfall of the Louis Vuitton jewelry is just that it's very overpriced. It's obviously not real. Silver, which is actually not very expensive. I wish that some of these items were actually made of real silver, like this cuff. The prices are obviously very hard to digest. Again, though, 
as a fan of turquoise, I loved all the incorporation of the real turquoise in a lot of this jewelry. We have to talk about the grills, you guys. The grills were another thing that I believe were posted on Instagram before the show. They're very Pharrell. They're very hip hop streetwear inspired. The brand worked with Dolly Cohen. I'll put her Instagram up on the screen as well on these grills. I think they were executed really well. While they're random in the sense that nobody was actually wearing grills in the traditional Western wardrobe, I think it's a really interesting way to incorporate in this collection. I, I would assume they're not actually selling them, but it was obviously a great styling feature and it got the press talking. Okay, we have to talk about these bandanas. I don't know if you noticed them or not, but I am obsessed with jewelry, costume jewelry, big diamonds and jewels. I immediately noticed this bandana with this huge like red ruby on it. And then I saw it even more in some of the Reese photos. So on the runway, we saw it in black and we saw it in olive. I love this. I love anything like with a photo of a big crystal or jewel. I don't know how to explain it, but I like bandanas. I like bandana print and I love big jewels. So I thought this bandana was a really cool, something you could add to your collection if you're not into Western, but you wanted to pick up a piece. And then we also have the Native American inspired scarf that features the Dakota flower embroidery. I believe this is more of a printed version of the Dakota flower embroidery, but we are going to talk in detail about the Native American collaboration when we get to the bags. We also saw a smaller version of this scarf, like a bandana version walk on the runway, which you can see tied around his neck in that lower photo. Belts. This collection had an unlimited amount of variations of belts. I don't know how many of these are going to be produced. There were so many of them, so many different colors, so many different buckles. Belt buckles are like a huge part of Texan culture, rodeo culture. Like I think they win belt buckles in competition, like don't quote me on, on this, but I just know they're very popular. So it makes sense that they were a big focal point of this collection. And I actually liked a lot of them. I thought that they were super Super unique and different from the same old Louis Vuitton belt buckle that we always see. I like this LV Western font one that Pharrell was wearing. It has the turquoise details. I think this one was really cool. I love the one where it fully spells out Louis Vuitton. Just like big, interesting belt buckles. Of course, you can't do Western without hats. We saw actual cowboy hats. We saw baseball caps with embroidery and detail. Plenty to choose from here. Again, a lot of craftsmanship details even workwear gloves. The gloves featured a lot of the turquoise, which I think is really cool. I'm interested to see if they actually sell these, but the ones with the sort of horsehair pony hair with the turquoise details, I thought those were really cool. Last but certainly not least, small other goods. There's always a plethora of bag charms. I think Pharrell also loves bag charms. The two charms we saw in this collection, we saw the little micro nano speedy thing in the buffalo check, and then we also saw two charms one a cow and one a guitar. I think the guitar is super cute. If you have any sort of connection to music or guitars, that would be very cool to add to your collection. I am not a huge cow fan personally, but if you are a huge cow fan, then obviously this is adorable. I love the like nose ring thing. I don't know what the proper terminology is for that. And then we also saw SLGs in a lot of the Reese photos of like pocket organizers, dop kits, stuff like that, which I will show you some photos of as we talk about the bags. So that is it for the plethora of accessories. Now let's get into the most important part, which is the bags. Okay guys, we have so much to cover. Please bear with me. We are going to start with the leather bag but I'm also going to cover the Native American collaboration and sort of the controversy surrounding that. So make sure you stay tuned for all of the information. Let's dive deep into all of the bags featured in this show. We have to start with the leather speedies because of course the turquoise leather speedy was the first bag to turn the corner in that show. So I will tell you, I was at work in the office when this collection debuted and I actually had a call at 2 p.m. when it was supposed to start. So I couldn't watch the show live because I had a call from 2 to 2.30. So I'm on this call and I put, I have two screens at my desk. So I had the show up on my second screen and I'm talking on this call on the first screen. It was like a one-on-one, -on -one, nothing like too serious. So I wasn't being completely unprofessional, but I wanted to have it up just in case. So I'm on this call and Louis Vuitton always starts late. So I was hopeful, hey, they'll start late. Maybe I'll end up catching the show. And I'm wrapping up the call. And as I'm wrapping up to the call, 
I glance to the side and I see the turquoise speedy bag and I audibly gasped on the call. Obviously the person I was talking to didn't know what I was looking at and he was like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, sorry. Um, I've got the Louis Vuitton show over on this screen. I just saw a bag that blew my mind. So it literally took my breath away when I saw that turquoise bag turn the corner. So in Pharrell's original interviews, when he first debuted his very first spring summer collection, he was talking about the leather speedy bag and this concept of the leather speedy bag. He mentioned that this was something that was just the beginning and that he was going to continue to iterate on. And it's a program, right? So it's starting here, but then like when you see where it's gonna evolve in the seasons to come, he has very clearly chosen the Speedy as his anchor. And I think that we will continue to see the expansion of these over the top collectible pieces. So we saw some incredible colorways in this collection. This is obviously a men's collection. I think men are going to like these bags, but I think women are also going to love these bags. And for the people who weren't sold on um, the price and the concept in his first collection, there's going to be a lot more competition in this collection because these are very desirable colorways. We saw the turquoise, we saw the purple, and of course we saw the pink. And if you watched one of my previous videos, I mentioned that I would die if we got a pink in this Speedy. And here we have it, and it's beautiful and amazing. And honestly, again, it took my breath away. I remember actually I slacked someone at work and said, this turquoise bag is beautiful. If there's a freaking pink, I'm going to lose it. And then the freaking pink walked out and I literally, I think I stood up from my desk and was like screaming. Like I was like having a full reaction to it. And you know what? That's the kind of stuff I love about fashion is like when you actually feel the joy and the rush when you're watching, that's when you know you truly want something or you love something. So all three colorways, I think probably evoked an emotional response from a lot of customers and collectors, not just men, especially women. So turquoise, purple, pink, love these. Then we also got this tannish taupe color, which now in seeing the post photos looks much more beige and then this chocolate brown these appear to be nuba the price i'm seeing is 12,000 euro which is more expensive than the size 50 of the regular leather bag but what's interesting about the nuba version is that they could not figure out a way to print the lv monogram on it so the lv monogram is actually embroidered on the bag which is just an incredible feature. Like that is detail, that is craftsmanship. It also features brushed silver hardware. So now that you have it here, you realize that the Speedy is in a super soft Nabuk and it is impossible to do the print on the Nabuk, otherwise you're gonna burn the leather because it's really delicate. So what we did, and I need you to zoom in, everything is stitched. Every single Vuitton here is stitched in the same way how we do the canvas print on it maintaining the suppleness of the speed and as promised yeah. so you have the oars here again and there's all the speedy it's gonna come with this own uh, nabuk stitched uh, details and inside all lambskin to the black that this time is gonna be in silver come on this is <laughs> this is it the other thing I want to mention is that we all know Pharrell has a hidden stamp under the leather tab of these bags and on all of the bags from this collection it is a horse stamp. Personally I love this feature of the stamp. It kind of as a collector forces you to be like I gotta I gotta collect them all. I need one stamp from each collection. I kind of love that. So at 12,000 euro that's probably around 15k or more. It's pretty expensive but I think the embroidered monogram definitely makes that worth it. And then of course we saw the ostrich and the croc. I'm gonna talk about those more in detail coming up. Okay, just in case you're not familiar with the prices, I put together this whole image of what we've heard as far as which colors are going to be available in which sizes and of course what the prices are. Supposedly the prices are staying the same and are not increasing. Who knows what could happen in the next six months, but often we see items on the runway and not all of them get produced and or they can produce in different variations 
variations. So I want to talk through what I'm seeing as far as which colors are going to come in which sizes. So in the size 25, which is the smallest size, it is the size that I have here. We are supposedly going to see only the purple and the turquoise. So the pink is not going to be available in size 25, which personally I kind of love since I already have a 25. I would want to try a different size. Uh, but the price of a size 25 is 9,300 US dollars. The size 40, we are supposed to be getting the purple, the turquoise, and the fuchsia. So if you watch the show, the fuchsia was definitely a size 50 in the show. Supposedly though, it's going to be produced in the size 40. I will be devastated if I see that that is a Via Treasure Trunk exclusive since they got the orange last round, which was also size 40. This better be available to the public. The price of the size 40 is 11,100. And then lastly, the size 50 will be available only in the turquoise and that retails for 12,400. I love all of these colors. I'm absolutely obsessed, but the pink has stole my heart. I'm not like a Tiffany blue person. I'm actually, obviously it's not a Tiffany thing. It's a turquoise thing, but people are going to reference it as Tiffany blue. It's never been like my thing. You guys know I love pink. So the pink is obviously my favorite here. Oh my gosh, you guys, the one thing I wanted to say about the leather speedies that I am like really sad about is I think that the pink, purple, and turquoise all should have featured silver hardware. So obviously we got the gold hardware in, in the first collection. I think a really cool way to differentiate these colors in the second collection would have been to have silver hardware instead of the brushed gold. And I think all of these colors lend themselves to silver as well as gold, but especially the turquoise and the purple, I think really would have lent themselves more to silver. I think the pink could go either way, but as a collector or somebody who might want to buy something from every single collection, I feel like these would have been perfect perfect to do silver hardware. And I think that that was a miss. So next let's talk about the ostrich. I immediately noticed that this was ostrich on the runway because you could see the bumps of the, the quills or whatever it's called. I thought these were beautiful bags. I'm actually typically not a huge ostrich fan. Like when it comes to exotic Birkins, ostrich is my least favorite. The way I saw it executed on these speedy bags, I loved it. I thought that, that this was a great execution. I think I I like it more like mushy than stiff in a Birkin. Maybe that's what it was. I don't know, but I also really loved how they also made the Vachetta leather ostrich and it was like just throughout the bag. It just made it look way more detailed and way more a luxe. If you are a ostrich lover, I personally thought that this was a great use of this exotic material. And again, I typically don't like ostrich. I preferred this Louis Vuitton ostrich to an Hermes ostrich, which is interesting. Thing. But yeah, the prices that we've seen, these are from IG. If you are not following empho.lv, you should definitely be following that account. You have the size 18 in this colorway Canyon for 11,500 euro. You have the size 25. The color is called Red Rocks. Makes total sense. It's 18,000 euro. And then you have the size 40 in Cactus, which is going to be retailing for 28,000 euro. I actually don't know the price of a Birkin in Ostrich. It would be interesting to like compare that. There's also a steamer size 40 in this Canyon colorway for 28,000 euro. I prefer the Speedy. So continuing to talk about some of the exotics. We saw this crocodile, like almost new buck brushed material. I thought that it was printed, but based on the info from IG, it's actually real crocodile and it's just brushed to make a very matte finish. It almost looks like suede, which I think is very interesting and super unique. I have never seen that done before. You've got the size 25 steamer for 50,000 euro, the horseshoe bag for 25,000 euro, the speedy P940 for 70,000 euro euro and then the size 25 for 40,000 euro that also comes in a light blue colorway as well. We saw these on the runway in the Speedy 40 and this horseshoe bag. Again, when I saw them, this is called the New Buck Canyon colorway. When I saw them, I figured that they were printed, but now knowing that they are not, these are very expensive bags, but very cool and very unique if you can afford them. I love the Western hardware detail on these bags as well. All right, let's dive into the exceptional pieces. These are the very high-end, very expensive bags. Well, actually, first let's talk about the black 
Shadow Speedy, which is actually called the Black Ghost Rider LVP9 Speedy 40. It looks very similar to a Shadow Birkin. I'm calling it the Shadow Speedy. I made a quick TikTok on it that I'm going to insert here. So please follow me on TikTok if you don't already. So we've all seen the rare and highly coveted Hermes Shadow Birkin, but have you seen Pharrell's new Shadow Speedy for Louis Vuitton? The Hermes Shadow Birkin was first introduced in fall 2009 by Jean-Paul Gaultier, who was the creative director of Hermes from 2003 to 2010. The Hermes Shadow Birkin features a raised impression or embossing of the top flap of the bag as well as the sangles. There's another photo of the bag on the runway and another one. On the back of the bag you can also see the hanging clochette. Ten years after the inception of the bag it was reissued in limited quantities again starting in 2019 and it is still sold today. This is considered a rare bag that does resell for around $30,000 this current list here is from Fashion File. So in pre-fall 2018, Louis Vuitton did release what they called a shadow leather speedy in the size 40 here. It did feature the debossed monogram as well as matte black hardware. Pharrell Williams just debuted his fall winter 2024 collection this past week. Look 69 here features this black leather speedy bag that appears to have embossed features that are a lot more similar to the Hermes Shadow Birkin. You can see Pharrell's interpretation here is a lot more minimalist than the pre-fall 2018 style. It has the embossed leather details here as well as the embossed name tag up in the corner and the embossed key bell. This bag also features matte black hardware and then we can also see embossed strap details on the shoulder strap here. While obviously very similar to the Hermes Shadow Birkin, I do still love this bag but I'm sure it will come with a very high price tag. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. So that bag is going to retail for somewhere around 10,000 euro, even though it's very obviously inspired by a Shadow Birkin. I really like this bag. It's giving quiet luxury vibes. I think this is a very cool idea for somebody who doesn't like logos and or who's obsessed with the Shadow Birkin and can't get offered one. You know what? This is a great alternative. Next, I have to mention this Speedy Damier Studs. This is supposed to retail somewhere around 30,000 euro. We saw the variation of this in his first collection, Pearls, which I believe retailed for 40,000 USD. I think these studs are very cool. It also comes in a steam bag. I was not able to find a price on that one. You have this Samir. I, I don't know exactly how you pronounce it, but this is a vintage style that was recently released in the BB. It's obviously decked out here with Western hardware made of leather. This is something that I feel like would not actually go into production. Maybe it's made to order. It's supposedly around 40,000 euro. You also have that speedy bag all the way over to the right there. You can tell that the underneath of the bag is a black and white leather speedy, which honestly I feel like a lot of people would like that if they released the the leather speedy in black and white, but this one is covered with what appears to be saddle hardware. I thought this was like a holster or something, but I believe it's stirrups. I don't know that much about horse riding culture. That's another bag that I highly doubt will be produced. And then of course we have the rodeo speedy, which is this season's version of the millionaire speedy. Apparently the size 25 is going to retail for around 230,000 euro. The size 40, 250,000 euro. This bag features features real silver hardware. Obviously you see the Western detail on it. And then it is a hand painted silver monogram on the crocodile material. So lots of intricate details there that add to the price. And then of course, some more detail shots that we saw of these bags on Instagram. And I'm going to leave all of the Instagram handles from where I found these photos of so that you can go follow some of these accounts. There are so many great details that are available on Instagram. So next, some bags that didn't actually fit into a category and were kind of like a category of their own or just off by themselves. You have this heat molded bag conceived by Pharrell Williams. Maybe it's supposed to be shaped like a saddle. I don't actually know what the purpose of this bag. It's kind of random. It's going to be very expensive as well, around 20,000 euro. Tell me if this shape means anything to you. We also saw these book clutches, which we have seen from Louis Vuitton before. Next were these arabesque pieces, which I feel like you either love or you hate. So many people have done Western collections before. I'm not sure why this one was so harshly criticized. I guess because people are saying that it's too costly 
costumey. But again, I think this is Pharrell Williams' interpretation of Western for Louis Vuitton that he thinks will sell to his customers and, and or to himself. So I love some of the weird costumey details. Something about this arabesque is giving me, I call them like freaky bags. It's like, I guess tacky, but I am attracted to things like this. And I really loved the just like full on Western Louis Vuitton of this, of these pieces. And unfortunately, because of their leather and the craftsmanship, I'm not going to be able to afford anything. If these were affordable, I would want something from this arabesque. I don't know why I'm like drawn to it in just like a flashy tacky way. I don't know how to explain it. The speedy bag is 12,000 euro in the red, black, white colorway. There's a lot of intricate leather work here. The black one, I don't have a price, but if you zoom in, you can see that there is an, an exotic on this bag. I can't tell if it's Python or lizard, but I'm assuming either this isn't going to be produced or it will be very expensive. There was a little nano bag charm. The soft trunk was really cute. It featured this silver ball chain, 10,000 euro. I would love that, but the standout piece for me was this pochette looking bag. It almost looks like a deeper pochette accessoire with this arabesque print. I would love to add this bag to my pochette collection. If you look at this zoomed out photo of this model carrying this bag, again, this is just like a freaky little bag that I would love to wear with like an all black outfit. I don't know. I'm sure a lot of people hate this arabesque print, but I was really drawn to it and it's hard to describe why. These leather bags, I don't like them. I think they had to throw something in there for like the quiet luxury customer, but I think these are boring and while I assume they are made of high quality, you know, pebbled leather. They are giving me mulberry and I'm just not a fan. I think the best one of the bunch is this like messenger steamer bag. I could see someone wearing this crossbody, the one all the way to the left, and then the actual steamer bag, the black one on the bottom. I think that that is obviously a great Birkin alternative. We can argue to the moon and back what came out first. Um, but technically the steamer did come out before the Birkin, but I believe the hack came out before the steamer. Again, whole separate video. Louis Vuitton steamer has been around for just as long I'm not going to say they are inspired by the Birkin, they are inspired from themselves. Keep all with the flap above it is weird and pointless. There is no reason the way that it's like pulling up on the flap, this seems impractical. I don't see why anybody would need this bag. I do love the soft trunk sort of uh, black one in the top right corner, but I think that's an interesting bag, but it's just boring. Like that could be a Louave puzzle. I don't think we need it from Louis Vuitton. I wanted to show you some of the details on Instagram, how they incorporated that sort of old fashioned lock where it has the, the turn, I don't know what you call those, but you turn the numbers. I thought that was interesting. And then how the ball chain has some turquoise details. I thought that was really interesting as well. I just like how they had like some unique accessories, but again, not my favorite bags. And then we can jump right into just talking about the steamers in general. I read somewhere that this steamer was adapted into three sizes in this collection. I thought I saw even like four sizes though, but there was definitely a size 25, a size 40, and a size 65. I believe what we're seeing on this screen is the turquoise and the white one, I believe are size 25s. Everything else I believe is a size 40. It's just different sizes of photos. I like the turquoise version of this steamer. I think this would be a really cool bag for somebody who likes totes and who loves the color turquoise. I did really like this plain leather turquoise version of this bag. The one that says the Carter Brooklyn, New York, all the way to the side. Apparently that's some sort of Jay-Z reference, Carter mentioning Brooklyn. It is made of this interesting white denim monogram material. I do think that this bag is very interesting. I don't understand why it exists in this collection, but it is nevertheless interesting to look at. Next, you have these carved leather bags that are inspired by saddles. Again, I love the tiny turquoise details on these bags, like the little rivets, the braided handles. Surprisingly, the prices, while still high, that keep all at 4,500 euro is not crazy compared to some of the stuff we've seen. I forgot to mention, we've been seeing these fringe luggage tags throughout the collection. I think that this bag in the lower left corner for 72 
200 euro is kind of a mix of the speedy and the recent side trunk that we saw from the brand. It also has the horseshoe details on the side of it. I think these bags have very interesting leather work and if you are into Western style and you love Louis Vuitton, these would be great pieces to add to your collection. This next page, I didn't know what to call it. It looks like some sort of a treated vachetta to me, honestly. It looks very workwear. I think these are very interesting bags, kind of unnecessary. I'm curious to see if they'll be produced, but the keep all with these three pockets, I definitely want to call out the accessories that were in this bag. You had the flask, the cigarette holder, Menardier, and then the cards. Louis Vuitton has done cards in the past. I feel like we haven't seen them in a while. So I thought these were really cool accessories. I love the way they styled this bag on the runway with the charms, the bandana, or like the straps hanging off of it. I thought this was really interesting. Uh, again, though, these were like a couple of random pieces. This mini version of the bag, which is either a city keep all or a speedy, I'm not sure. I saw this on Instagram. It was not part of the show, but I, I love the little metal rivets on this bag. And I think the small one is very cool if you're into this like treated vachetta look. Okay, this brushed monogram leather. This stood out to me in the show. I noticed it and I thought that it looked really beautiful on the runway. We saw a keep all, a little mini speedy or mini keep all. There was also this like mushy clutch, which almost looks like the trunk clutch, a mushed up version. This is a new silhouette. You can see this bag also featured that ball chain, which we saw on a couple bags that I really like. There was a suitcase that we saw at the Reese and then a bunch of little accessories like a dop kit, a wallet, a pocket organizer. I actually really liked this. It's leather, but it's brushed. So it's got that Western vibe. I think this is something I would consider buying one of these pocket organizers for my husband because he has the monogram eclipse pocket organizer, but I think this leather version is really cool. I would love to see this in person. Okay. We're almost done guys. I promise. Let's talk about the canvas bags. Canvas is Louis Vuitton's bread and butter. So there always has to be canvas incorporated into the collection. There's all these exceptions exceptional expensive leather pieces. Not everyone can afford them. So there always has to be something in canvas that's more affordable. In this first collection, we got the Damier Pop and the Damouflage. In this collection, we got the Dusty Monogram, the Buffalo Check, and the Camouflage. So personally, I love this Dusty Monogram. It's my favorite of the three. The canvas is made to look sun eroded or dusty, very Western, as if it was on the back of of a wagon going through the desert, you know, with all the dust coming up on it. I, I think it really made sense for this theme. They're also styled with lots of accessories on this bags. It's unclear whether they'll be sold with them or separately, but I think it made a lot of sense that as you're sort of traveling, you're, you're collecting little trinkets or accessories to add to your bag. So I really liked the styling. Again, we're seeing that fringe luggage tag. Luggage tag collectors, I think are going to love these. I love the old fashioned key detail. So again, time it back to this original American West where they had these like old fashioned keys and locks. We also saw this round luggage tag hanging off the bag, which might be an accessory. These were really cool. And then the ball chain feature, which we saw on the steamer bag, as well as this sort of smushed up clutch. This is where we saw that giant steamer 65 with sort of that graffiti writing on the front of it. I think I really like in the top right corner, this almost looks again like the side trunk from the women's collection. The top of it's a little different, but you have the hardware pieces on the corners with that fringe luggage tag hanging down the front. I think this is a really cool wearable piece. And of course, I think the keep all will be collectible if you're looking for something in this Western theme. There were a lot of pictures of extra styles that we didn't see on the runway. On Instagram, there was a backpack. You can see the Vachetta leather also looks very dark and almost worn in these better lit photos, which I think is really cool. These these just look like really vintage and aged. There was also a pocket organizer. And then again, similar to what I called out in the arabesque bag, this looks like a pochette accessoire. It looks a little deeper than maybe a typical pochette accessoire, but you've got this ball chain with the fringe luggage tag. It's very similar in size. Tell me what you guys think about this bag. 
kind of encroaching again on women's collection items. Next is the Damier Buffalo check canvas. We saw this in two colorways. There was the red and black, which is more traditional, and then the brown and this mustard yellow. Personally, not my style. I actually don't prefer any of these bags. If I had to pick a colorway, I like the red and black. If you're into this, great. I'm not a huge fan of these Buffalo check bags. There were some more accessories featured in the Reese, like pocket organizers. I think these will be popular. And certainly, last but not least, you had the cow mouflage print. I've already stated that I am not a fan of cow print. I'm just not. I don't know <laughs> what to what to say about that. I've never been a fan of cow print, so I'm not really into these pieces, but if you are, that might be interesting to you. I do, however, like these actual cow hide or horse hide bags. It's not something that I would ever wear, but I think these are really cool and, again, would be interesting for somebody who, you know, lives in Texas or is into Western wear. I think this has a much more luxe, elevated vibe than the cow mouflage print. Okay, last but certainly not least, we are going to talk about the Native American inspired piece of this collection and some of the controversy surrounding it. So first I wanna talk about some of the controversy surrounding this collection. I'm going to start with reading from the official Louis Vuitton press release, what was stated about this portion of the collection. The press release or the official statement from Louis Vuitton really focused on the fact that this was based on the American West with a heavy focus on cowboys. At the bottom, last paragraph, it also mentioned that accessories, staging, and music all featured creative exchanges with artists from the Dakota and Lakota nations, thanks to DJ Two Bears of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. Native American culture is celebrated in flower motifs on bags, symbolizing the beautiful roots of nature, as well as hand-painted power flesh motifs on keep all bags. This is what was officially stated about this element of the collection. There were also details about the Native American inspiration and collaborative pieces in the show notes. Show notes are only given to the attendees of the show, which really is mainly for the press so that they have details to then put in their articles. I know it specifically mentioned the hand painting, the expert embroidery techniques. It is then up to the press, the viewers of the actual show, to take, you know, that official press release, the notes from the show, and what they visually see at the show, and write their articles about the collection. One of the big criticisms that I saw was that the collaboration wasn't talked about enough, and the actual creatives that were part of this collaboration were not talked about. They were not named by name, so it really didn't amplify their involvement and their voices. So I do not have a personal opinion on this. I cannot speak on it because I am not Native American, so my opinion does not matter. I tried to watch videos and read comments from both sides of the coin to understand what people's perspectives were, and I encourage you to do the same. All I'm stating here is the facts of what I saw, and from what I can see in the comments of a lot of the negative and positive videos were that there it was pretty split. Some people that, you know, outwardly said they were Native American, said that they were happy that these creatives were included, and some people definitely viewed it as cultural appropriation. Please go research and look into that so you can see the different perspectives and remain unbiased. So again, I think the main issues were that the creatives that worked on this were not mentioned by name, and there was not enough done by the brand to share these creators' stories and provide more information, which I completely understand where the people that are upset are coming from here. So in an effort to remain unbiased, I do want to call out that there was pre-existing controversy between Pharrell and the Native American communities prior to this show from 2014. So Pharrell actually wore a Native American headdress on the cover of Elle UK in June 2014. This then warranted a subsequent apology from him. There was a lot of press. There was a Time article I pulled up that mentioned that Pharrell's error was to simply appropriate a traditional Native American headdress without either regard for its cultural significance or an attempt to turn some of its elements into something new. This article from The Independent said that Pharrell said he was genuinely sorry in his apology and he respects and honors every kind of race 
background and culture. He also said that he has Native American heritage, which a lot of people were not happy about. The Indian country media network argued that this doesn't matter and that the photo is still offensive. The right to wear an eagle feathered ceremonial bonnet is earned over the course of a person's lifetime and presented as symbols of honor and respect. So with this previous controversy in mind, I have to assume that Pharrell and Louis Vuitton were very careful about how cultural appreciation was incorporated in this collection so as to not appropriate. So again, I just wanted you to have all of the background on this and I encourage you to go do your own research and look at everybody's points of view on this because I realize as a fan of Pharrell, I don't want it to ever seem like I am brushing this under the rug. I want to make sure that you guys have all the facts. So with that said, I am going to do my part as a creator to draw attention to these pieces and the creators who worked on them in this video. So I'm going to put up a slide on the screen. I'm going to talk about everyone who worked on this collection. So first up was DJ Two Bears, who on Instagram goes by Chief I. He was specifically the one called out as the collaborator and named by Louis Vuitton. It is then my understanding that he tapped a few artists from his communities to also help and participate on these pieces. Both Kendra Redhouse and Lauren Goodday were mentioned and they both posted on their Instagrams. Kendra Redhouse captioned under this photo of the blanket that this was one of the few garments that was created outside of the LV fashion house and in the Chief Eye North Dakota studio, which was this blanket. I did not actually see this blanket in the show, but we did see a couple of other blankets rolled up that walked down the runway. Lauren Goodday also posted that she worked on this handmade blanket, which took many hours and required technical skills. She specifically called out that the collection was inspired by the American West, which included representation of Native America. So I think she was trying to make it very clear that this wasn't supposed to be a Native American inspired collection. It was about the American West, which Louis Vuitton also called out. And you cannot talk about the American West without talking about Native American culture and Native American representation. Had he not included them, he definitely would have been called out and it would have been a, a separate controversy. She mentioned that she was invited by Chief I to participate and her goal in participating was to uplift and celebrate indigenous artistry, creativity, and heritage. As a Native artist, she deeply values opportunities to showcase their diverse talents and cultures. Some of the artists specifically got back backlash themselves for even participating it as sort of like selling out. So I think she was sort of stating her stance on why she participated within her caption. The other two creatives that I think were even more involved were Trey Little Sky and Josie. I hope I'm not pronouncing that wrong. If I am, I apologize. Josie Little Sky, who own the brand Topa, which is sort of a streetwear inspired, definitely Native American brand. They share an Instagram. Josie posted on her Instagram her deepest gratitude to Pharrell and Chief I for entrusting them with a chance to pursue their passion and craft designs for the collection. She showed, of course, the bags that they worked on, the blankets, the scarves, and even some ready to wear embroidery that wasn't mentioned that it seems that they also collaborated on. Lastly, I wanna mention Gunnar Jules, who is a Native American musician who walked in the show and was carrying one of the bags that Josie and Trey collaborated on. This was in Look 49, and I will include his Instagram as well, so you can go check out all of these artists and creatives. At the finale of the show, Pharrell was joined by Native American Voices of Resistance, a group comprised of singers from Native American nations, across North America. It seemed like a very beautiful show. I know that a lot of the Native Americans that were there were excited to be there and were posting about how proud they were to be there on their Instagrams as well. So this is everybody by name that I could find in my research. I hope you found that helpful and interesting. Now let's dive into some of the beautiful bags that they worked on. So the two biggest pieces that were called out in the show notes were the Dakota flowers and the parflesh. Doing a little Google research, uh, I found that the Dakota 
Dakota people are well known for their use of florals in their embroidery. So in the show notes, it's specifically mentioned that the Dakota flowers part of the collection was created with artists of the Dakota and Lakota nations, which we know now were under the creative direction of DJ Two Bears. And the specific creators that worked on that were Josie and Trey, Little Sky. We saw both a speedy bag and a messenger bag actually walk in the show that featured embroidery of this Dakota flower symbolizing the beautiful roots of nature. These pieces were very show-stopping in my opinion. I will say that after the turquoise and the pink speedy bags, the next bag that stood out to me that really made me gasp was this Dakota flower embroidered speedy bag. This really caught my attention just because of the color and you could just see the, the craftsmanship that would have had to go into something like that. It, it appears to be on a white canvas base and then it is beautifully embroidered with the different colors of embroidery. You also see these horsehair bag charms. Again, I just feel like this bag really stood out. I have no idea what the cost is. I could not find any information on it. I don't know if these will be produced or not. We we also saw that embroidery then printed on a scarf, which I think will be much more accessible. The next Native American inspired part of this collection was the parflesh. I hope I'm saying that correctly, but I researched this item as well. And then the Denver Art Museum had a great little explanation, which was that a parflesh is a raw hide container used to carry objects, kind of like a bag, right? Plains and Western American Indians made containers out of raw hide, which is cleaned and dried animal hide, to store or carry items like moccasins, clothing, or dried food. French traders called these objects parfleshes from the French words par meaning parry or defend and flesh meaning arrow because the hide was tough enough to deflect an arrow and also used to make shields. So these parflesh items typically feature color, which the meaning and symbolism of the colors vary from one tribe to another. They also feature geometric shapes and patterns, which also have different meanings to different tribes. Each tribe uses certain symbols as a form of visual identity. Okay, so you can clearly see the inspiration in these bags. They are again hand painted in the North Dakota studio of DJ Two Bears. The Standing Rock Keep All, which is the one in the top left-hand corner. You can see the topa design in the middle, which looks like a plus sign. And this signifies the four winds of the earth. So another criticism that I saw for the Native American collaboration was that many Native Americans can't actually afford to buy pieces from this collection and support it. The price, as you can see for that Standing Rock Keep All is around 20,000 euro. Again, it is hand painted, so I am wondering how something like this can even go into production, if it will be produced, or if it's really just a showpiece. And then if they are going to be produced and sold, maybe they won't actually be hand painted, maybe they will be screen printed, I'm not sure. And then will there be any sort of donation to any of these Native American communities? If you are in love with these pieces, you want to support this part of the collaboration, I do think that one of the most affordable pieces is going to be that scarf. It does look printed, it doesn't look embroidered. So I do think that would be a great way to add one of these Native American inspired pieces to your collection. So I personally do think that Louis Vuitton can do a lot more to amplify the voices of the creators that they collaborate with. And I would love to see them incorporate more storytelling into their marketing. Not just because of this particular controversy, but personally, I love hearing more about the meaning and inspiration behind the pieces. Something that Virgil Abloh used to do in his collections was that he publicly published his show notes notes to his Canary Yellow website. And I really thought that that was a great way to democratize fashion and allow anybody that wants to read those show notes, read about the inspiration behind those things to have access. I was really hopeful that when Pharrell joined, he would continue on that legacy of publishing the show notes. Unfortunately, he has not. And I have personally found it difficult to find them. So I really wish he would bring that back. That is it, you guys. Wow, I cannot believe we made it through. I know this is going to be a terrible long video. That was a true deep dive and it really took me a lot of time to put together so I really hope you enjoyed it. If you enjoyed this video please consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this collection in the comments and what some of your favorite pieces were. Also please feel free to let me know if you enjoy these types of videos or what other types of videos you would like to see from me. You can also follow me on Instagram or TikTok. I try to post my thoughts on TikTok a lot 
lot more quickly or in real time. Stay tuned for my next video where I will tell you my wish list of the items that I would love to pick up from this collection. If you made it to the end of this video, you have no idea how much I appreciate you and your support. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye bye.